So let's uh, get talking about the market where there has been a rally and we haven't spoken enough about it, the bond markets. Both the old 10-year and the new 10-year are below 7%. Uh, the old 10-year paper is also at 6.97 as of uh, uh, closing hours on Friday itself and the new 10-year is at 6.8. Come another rate cut, it can go all the way to 6.6 .6 perhaps uh, uh, and that would mean uh, a free free uh, a place for uh, NDFC companies to raise money because they are the ones who are raising money from the wholesale market. Uh, on that note, Gagan Baga of India Bulls Housing Finance and B. Vaidyanathan of Capital First join us. Uh, good morning to both of you gentlemen. Uh, Mr. Vaidyanathan, you go first. Uh, uh, how much has the cost of money fallen for your own company and what do you think will be the potential fall in the cost of money in the next 12 months? Um, see the uh, incremental cost of uh, borrowing through the NCD market or the bond market is about 100 basis points cheaper than borrowing from a bank. So basically if even if an NBFC uh, uh, replaces its bank borrowing to the extent of 30 percent or incremental lending does through bonds uh, to the extent of 30 percent then uh, you get a 30 basis points benefit to the uh, uh, to, uh, to the PBT line and that's one of the reasons I think uh, NBFCs uh, and HFCs I guess uh, should look forward to an increase in margins in the years to come and the second thing that happens is that in the bond market for NBFCs the benefit comes with a lag uh, unlike banks which have a bond business which they do as a trading business and they see the benefit immediately. Uh, the repricing takes time for an NBFC but it comes with a lag. I think the best of that is yet to come in the next one year. Okay, Gagan Banga of India Bulls Housing is also with us. Gagan, how much could your own margins improve because of lower cost of borrowings? So cost of borrowings will uh, have fallen over the last uh, six months to the tune of about 60 basis points. We've also done uh, close to about 16,000 crores of uh, new bond borrowings over the last 90 to 100 days. And that should allow us to replace a, a substantial piece of our bank borrowings and also fund our next two quarters growth. And uh, for us, uh, bond borrowings are uh, to the extent of about 120 basis points cheaper than uh, uh, the relevant uh, bank borrowings. Uh, more importantly, I think from a longer term perspective, um, any large balance sheet is looking for diversification of sources of funds and the bond markets also ensure that. So um, today what we have uh, going are multiple levers. So we have the domestic banks lending to us. We also have domestic institutions. Since our upgrade to AAA, we got access to longer term paper, which was uh, the state insurance companies and uh, the state owned provident funds. And um, in the last 90 days, we've been able to access international markets through the masala offering, as well as uh, the public markets through a public issue. So today we have uh, pr on practical basis all the possible levers which um, under the license that we hold have and that for the longer term from a financial stability perspective uh, is far more important than the additional 30 to 50 basis <coughs> points that we can possibly make uh, over the next six months. Okay, uh, <coughs> we'll just come back to you in a minute Gagan but I wanted a point clarified from Mr. Vaidhana that uh, you said that you see money 100 basis point cheaper for you but at the PBT level, uh, you know, the gain will be 30 basis points. So should I assume therefore that your spreads or your NIMS will rise by 30 basis? No, I'd like to clarify the numbers yes. for you. You get bonds at 100 basis points cheaper than what you borrow from banks. Mm. But if you replace 30% of your borrowing through bonds, that 30% mm. of 100 basis points, okay. that's 30 basis points. Okay, so, so how spreads, remain, spreads remain the same. Uh, will spreads remain the same, uh, Mr. Vaidyanathan? Are you therefore suggesting you will pass it all on to your uh, borrowers uh, or will you still be able to uh, bolster margins? No, I'd like to clarify. When we say spreads remain the same, I, I really meant that the that this 30 basis points will come back to the P&L okay. and after tax, which is about 10 basis points, you'll get about 20 basis points to the pro, to the profit after tax. Sure. And usually if you see any good NBFC which could replace, to go through the effort, that 20 basis points leveraged about seven times will give you about a return on equity improvement of about 150 to 200 basis points. So I think all NBFCs uniformly should see an improvement return on equity uh, as a result of a change of pricing in the bond markets. Okay, that's interesting. 
Gagan, good morning. Uh, uh, what's your outlook on return on equity? Because that's become an important parameter uh, from stock market's point of view. So we've historically been operating at a return on equity of uh, 25 to 31 uh, percent. As we speak, we are in somewhere in between 25 to 26 percent. I am hopeful of being able to climb uh, up the return on equity curve by at the rate of 100 to 150 basis points every year over the next uh, three to four years and to get back to uh, over 30 percent by 2020. So that's one of the goals that we set for ourselves and uh, the bond borrowing program will uh, enable us to uh, get past that first the 1 lakh crore mark and then the 1.5 lakh crore mark. So, uh, you know, I appreciate and agree with uh, uh, Mr. Vedinathan when he says, um, you know, the bonds uh, will improve uh, spreads and potentially can improve uh, return on equity. But what um, also needs to get appreciated is that as some of the larger housing finance companies and non-bank finance companies add up scale, uh, what is extremely crucial is for that scale to continue in a stable manner, you have to continue to diversify. And uh, what's happening with the bond markets is not only about a yield play in the short term, where uh, the government securities are correcting and therefore uh, yields uh, and corporate bonds are following in line. I think what's more important is that uh, the well-rated paper is today getting accepted in uh, places and institutions which otherwise would be hesitant and would be restricting themselves to exposure to say bank CDs or AAA PSU bonds and as that acceptability improves you will have a whole lot more of stability in the borrowing profile of uh, large uh, non-bank finance companies which um, are essentially uh, uh, today doing the heavy lifting as far as credit growth and the credit intermediation of the country is concerned. So Thank this you. is more a longer term sure. growth story. Yes, there will be an impact on short term financials, but the more important thing is how does credit growth over the next two to three years get channelized through the HFC and NBFC sector? So how do you think that could shape up? Because for you, for India Bulls Housing Finance, loan growth in the quarter gone by was very strong, uh, you know, 31.5%. How are things looking currently and what kind of disbursement growth do you hope to see over the next couple of quarters? So we had uh, at the start of the year officially guided for book growth to be in the range of 25 to 30 percent. We believe that we will uh, definitely end uh, book growth towards the higher end of the range. And uh, on the profit growth, we had looked at uh, a 20 to 25 percent guidance. And I am reasonably hopeful that with all the maturity that we are seeing on the evolution of the liability side, we should uh, for the next couple of years hope to now compound growth at uh, the higher end of that range also. More importantly, the uh, bond program will allow us to press the pedal harder as in when the credit market is on an overall basis uh, uh, going to improve. So today, while we have extremely strong growth on the home loan side, we continue to be circumspect about the commercial real estate portfolio that we have, which is close to about 20% of our loan book. Now that, uh, as and when the credit conditions in the country are to improve, can also grow a lot faster. So what we have today is ammunition to actually press the pedal as and when the credit uh, uh, profile of the country is to improve a lot harder than, than the 30% that we are anyways compounding at. Okay, I just have last couple of questions to both of you. Uh, Mr. Vaidyanathan, some numbers on what you expect by way of loan growth because uh, the public sector space is receding in terms of being able to service. So what is the loan growth you're expecting for your own uh, company? As well, give us some idea of how much your uh, margins might improve. See, uh, for us, uh, we feel quite confident to grow the company by 25% uh, this year. Uh, we, we closed the book last financial year at 16,000 crores, and a 25% growth on that should be very comfortable. Uh, we feel more confident today, today than maybe six months ago. Uh, number two, as far as profit growth is concerned, let me say analyst, analyst estimates are, uh, are that our profits will grow by about 50% uh, this year, and we don't, uh, we, we don't see a problem with that either. 
Okay, that's a safe way of putting it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Vedinathan. Uh, Gagan, you know, you, you, you concluded your answer to Sonia by saying that 20% uh, of your book is exposed to commercial real estate. Now, after the uh, arrest of uh, Pujit Agarwal, there is a bit of a flutter about the entire exposure to real estate. Are you quite confident of this 20% uh, or is that one downside uh, uh, in the entire NBFC space, the market is not factoring in this exposure to real estate? So historically, I, I would say Reserve Bank of India has been an extremely prudent regulator and there is a lot to be read in the fact that a couple of years ago, uh, the Reserve Bank had actually reduced the risk weights um, which were assigned to um, uh, loans uh, such as construction finance. So if you've been prudent in building your book, uh, close to about 60% of our commercial real estate book is uh, lease rent discounting, which is essentially the loan version of uh, a, a mortgage-backed security, which is um, serviced through rents, which has uh, got no execution risk and is in a structure which is bankruptcy remote to the builder. And um, the rest is um, are done, which is a very small a part of our book, which is roughly about 9% of our balance sheet is uh, residential construction finance where projects are maturing. So there would be uh, some gaps in organizations which do not understand how to evaluate project execution risk. But as has uh, been proven uh, adequately now in the credit system that you know, there would always be lending institutions which are a whole lot more mature on risk management. We have a fairly long track record of lending to this sector and even on that 8 or 9 percent of my balance sheet, I am extremely confident on the type of risk that we've taken. Not only for Wait, ourselves, Gagan. I can say that, you know, I can, I can make that argument for at least five other mature lenders. Okay, I cannot be that confident about the Reserve Bank surveillance. Uh, look at the kind of NPAs we have in the banking system. So I'm not that confident at all about, uh, uh, you know, uh, the system being able to escape NPAs. Uh, Mr. Vaidyanathan, your comment on the system itself, uh, uh, the entire NBFC lot, what is the risk of this lending to commercial real estate? I don't think it is as facile as uh, Gagan is making it out to be. See, we have, uh, see, Gagan is right to the extent that if you tie up your, uh, your uh, uh, receivables through the escrow very tightly and you lend to good developers with a good track record, you should broadly be safe. Uh, but the, uh, I do not on an average for the sector. Large, large ticket, large Large ticket, large ticket residential financing, generally speaking, uh, or corporate, corporate financing, large ticket is generally more black swanish in our opinion. Mm. Uh, in fact, in our case, uh, we, we have actually reduced the exposure to uh, wholesale financing from 90% many years ago to 10% now. And our retail has now become 90%. So it's just a philosophical view of what we, we, view we have about wholesale financing. Maybe it's not uh, our line of business we want to proceed in. Uh, but it'll, if it's very tightly structured, Sure, maybe there's a story. Okay, yeah, of course. Uh, good, well run companies are always well run. Point taken. Uh, out of time, Gagan Banga, V. Vaidhiradan, thank you very much for joining us. So, uh, there is quite clearly a huge Diwali for the NBFC companies. Wholesale rates uh, likely to get uh, uh, cheaper for these companies by 100 basis points. On that note, we wrap up Bazaar Chartbusters in a minute.